When it comes to me and music, expect the extreme. What extreme? Okay, try this. Take the CD that contains your top favorite song and put it in your CD player. Put that CD player in track repeat mode and see how many times you can listen to that same song in a row until you get bored of it. Okay, maybe you managed three plays or five. Maybe you really pushed yourself and managed to get ten. But ten is barely a start across the starting line in a marathon compared to my records. What are my records? You'll be stunned. 132,500. Yeah, you heard that right. 132,500. That does come with a pretty small margin of error, at least, but of 750. But still, <clears throat> that is taking things to an extreme. Okay, what about overall duration? Of course, that is a small three-second loop, if this is any hint. Hmm. However, that record is set before I kept play counts on Winamp, which dates way back to October 14 of 2005. Yeah, the middle of October 2005. The record is set in, I think, 2004. I'm not entirely sure. But still, it does give you the idea, at least. So, what about same song just for overall duration through normal time? Well, that record's gonna blow your mind away. 52 and a quarter days. Yeah, that's right, days. That's seven and a half weeks, or one-seventh of a year. Yeah, seriously. That's my top first place record. Okay, my second place record, 46 days. Third place record, 42 days. Okay. Okay, things are getting a little extreme there. However, that does include speed changes, though. Speed changes? I'll get to that a little bit later. However, what about same song and same speed? Basically, it's like the CD example. Well, even then, first place record, you ready? 17 days. Oh, dear. And then, of course, my second place record is 15 days. Then there's 12 days for my third place record. Okay, huge numbers, I'll tell you. Huge numbers. Okay, so now you have an idea on the extremes that I can get to. I'm probably one of the very few in the world that can do that kind of thing. Because after all, I don't know anyone else that can even get to a hundred plays, let alone going on for weeks on end. Although, normally, in a normal streak, I tend to get about 2,000 or 3,000 plays, or go at it for two days, sometimes as much as five. So, yeah, those records are really out to the extremes. So, what's this about speed changes? Well, I'll play, uh, let's see, I'll play this one. You might recognize the song, but uh, it does sound rather weird. That's because of one thing. It's been slowed down to 80% true speed. And there's actually significance behind that. What's the significance behind it? Easy. All my origins with speed changes came from the Talkboy tape recorder. Yeah, you can actually buy those things. They were released sometime after Home Alone 2 or something around there. I don't exactly remember. But I got it for Christmas, basically. And that's how I ended up getting started. I just put in one of my normal tapes recorded from speak and putting the tape recorder next to the speaker on my TV and just went from there. And just put it in slow motion because I was curious as to what it sounded like. And to my surprise, most of the songs actually sounded better. Most of them sounded better, which is kind of interesting. And that's what got me into changing speeds. But what about getting other speeds, such as even slower or even faster speeds? Well, for slower speeds, I needed two tape recorders. A regular one and a Talkboy, of course. The regular one records, and the Talkboy plays back in slow motion. Pretty obvious there. The regular tape recorder plays back at its... 
well, records at its true speed. The Talkboy takes that normal speed recording and slows it down. That's about 80% of true speed. And then, of course, I record that now 64% true speed, and I slow it down yet again to get 51.2 and so forth. Hmm. But what about the upper end? Very few songs do sound good at faster than normal speeds. There is one that still sounds pretty good, even at triple speed. Yeah, triple. There's songs that sound pretty decent even at one-third speed. And this is actually one of them that still sounds pretty decent at one-third speed. Although, it's kind of iffy. It's not in the best zone, I'll tell you that. So, okay, how do I go about changing speeds? Do note that this method does not work with MP3, WAV, or AUG, or AAC files. So which of these programs do you suppose I use to change speeds with? Okay, you're thinking Autocity. That's pretty obvious, right? Actually, surprisingly, it's not. And uh, what's this one? Well, this is a music creation program, and in a way it could work. But nope, even that's not it. I'll give you a hint. It's one of the most unobvious of all these. Okay, maybe this. I'm writing programs to do that. Mm, kind of, but not entirely. I actually use this. A hex editor? Now, how can that be used to change speeds? That is so weird. But it only works with WAV files, not anything else. Just note that. And there is a bug with this program. Um, okay, so if this is a maximized window, then how come I got so much screen space here? Look at all this screen space. I'm going off at a screwball diagonal, and yet there's so much screen space. But if I click the window twice to minimize it, and then click it again to restore, then guess what? It's normal. Weird, isn't it? So to change the speed, all I gotta do is, well, Here's this. This is that particular file. But what's with this GB on here, and what's this? I'll cover that a little bit later. And what's a sampler? I'll cover that a little bit later, too. However, to change the speed, all I need to do is find the byte marked 0x18. That's just programming notation, by the way. And that's this right here. That is the area, this out to here, is what's called the, the sampling rate. This is where the sample rate is. To change the speed, all I gotta do is go tools and code number and, well, make sure it's on overwrite and it's a long int because, well, that's basically the format. is It's a four byte value. Yes, it does max out at 4.3 billion, but I'm not sure if it's signed or unsigned. I'd have to look that up because it might be 2.173 billion instead. Or if that's, I think that's what it was. I don't exactly remember. But, however, how do I know what the speed I want to use is? Because I want 95% true speed. So how do I get that? You can't just type 95 and go from there. You're not even going to be able to hear it. So, how do I do that? Well, the formula is actually very simple. Speed that you want times true speed sample rate equals target sample rate. I use 50,000 for the true speed sample rate simply for mathematical simplicity. Well, what's 95% of 50,000? That happens to be this. Okay, nothing special about that. So, what am I done now? Not quite yet. This is byte 0x1c, and that goes out to here. What's this value? Bytes per second. This, the sample rate, directly corresponds to this. And if you change the sample rate, you must change the bytes per second. So what do I change this to? The multiplier. I just simply need to reference this value right here. This is what I call the multiplier. If I use stereo instead of mono, this would be a 4 instead. If I use 24-bit instead of 16, then it would be a 3 or a 6, depending on stereo or mono. Of course, more channels, and of course, then you end up with like 12 and stuff like that. But 
In my case, I just use 16-bit mono, which is sufficient enough. So I just multiply that by 2, and hey, 95% true speed, and I get 95,000. Isn't that so convenient? Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to make sure that it, that this lands on the multiplier, and this especially is 0x20. So, and if, since it is, I save. If it's not, then I would use this before saving, and otherwise just reattempt. Otherwise, you'd end up with a corrupt file, and it's just not going to work out right. But I'm done, so I change the speed. <laughs> Very peaceful song, isn't it? But if you haven't noticed here, it's at a 47 instead of a 40 like it was earlier. Hey, that's pretty neat, isn't it? So, okay, I know how to process, get change the speeds on my computer, right? But what about my MP3 player? I can't change it on a hex editor. I can't install a hex editor on there anyway, let alone go to the bytes and stuff needed and input the numbers and all that. That just ain't gonna happen. There is a way to around that that I've used for quite a while now, actually. What do you suppose that is? Well, to give you the basics, um, oops, wrong window, <laughs> I need to open one of these files here. But what's with this GB and the loopable and things like that? Well, to give you an idea, this was recorded with the speaker to micro er, microphone to the speaker method. That's basically what this this is. But I want you to listen closely. Uh, hmm, that isn't true speed. You might be thinking, uh, shouldn't that be fifty thousand? If you know the song, that is actually true speed. Some songs actually are 100,000 that are used, but only with the microphone to the speaker method. But one thing I want you to look at is the spectrum, the frequency distribution. Now, I have to keep the mouse otherwise non-moving, otherwise it's just going to end up causing a lot of dropped frames in virtual dub, and which is going to cause distortions and voice and stuff like that, and I don't think you want that. But Look up here. It says 19KHZ. That's basically the very top. Down here, way down here, it's 24. No K. So, it looks like a random mess, doesn't it? Especially up in the top section here. It's a real random mess. And that's the thing. Okay, now I want you... I'm just going to go back to that, and I'm going to check to see if i got drop frames. Good, I don't have any. This is the program I have used for that. Complex things, of course, they're going to have drop frame potential, so I need to use that carefully. And now, to compare the similar loopable one, except i got to get this to true speed, or the GB version, set that to 50. It's the same thing, except... Hmm. Hear the difference? GB stands for Game Bridge. This is because, well, I, this is done, started at the time I had the Game Bridge, but it eventually died on me, as in it kept crashing, hard freezing my computer, or my mouse and everything else didn't respond. So the thing was a piece of junk, basically, and I had to replace it. And, well, to give you an idea on the spectrum here, and what the consequences of using a TV tuner instead of the other thing is, well, look how crisp and clear that is. There's an obvious sharp boundary between samples and stuff like this. Of course, this comes from uncertainty from the bottom section here, but still, at least you kind of get the idea. Pretty neat, huh? But, yeah, it's so much crisp and clear that it's richer in detail and a lot of other things like that. And that's basically the difference between the GB and the non-GB. However, one other thing you might be wondering is, what's with this 20 lap and what's a sampler? 
Those are also things that need to be considered. Hmm. Well, all the sampler is, it's just a short segment of a part of the song that I enjoy the most. It's meant for experimentation reasons. Yeah, it's very, very short. Hard to read because of a bug in Odyssey, and it's because of one simple thing. Well, I'll show you. Many programs have this problem. All you gotta do is go to Display, nothing special here, go to Appearance and hit Advance, and all you gotta do is just set background colors like this. And there you have it. That's basically the color of my backgrounds for pretty much everything. But it does give you the idea on what I'm referring to. I'm just canceling my way up because it's... But if you do that, then web pages are going to have problems. Boy, does eBay need improvement with readability. And of course, a lot of other sites need improvement too. But YouTube video comments, I can't read them when I'm replying. So I have to use Notepad to type in there. But that's no big deal there. But it does get annoying over time. But why do I use a dark background? Easy. Image manipulation. When you're working with dark images, it's wise to have a dark background. Because boy, does it make images stick out so much better. You can see the contrast in dark images very easy. That's why I use a dark background. But now that you know what a sampler is anyway. And what's a 20 lap? Well, back in the day when I used tape recorders and stuff for my recording and stuff like that. I put the... because I was... there's some parts in songs that were particularly well liked and I otherwise just looped them indefinitely. But because I had to keep repeatedly unclicking the pause button which caused a click appearing every now and then and the timing isn't always exact either. So, in wave editing programs I have no problem at all with that. And that's basically what this is. It's just a seamless loop of one particular part. You probably might not recognize the song, but it's it comes from Bubsy, the original, on the Genesis version. Because that's the better version of Desert Zoom. The other one is horrible because of that whistling. Boy, does that irritate my ears like crazy. All whistling irritates my ears. But a five lap, well, what's the 20 lap? Well, lap is loop. I don't know why I called it lap originally. Probably because I was into racing games or something back then, but I have no idea. After all, when Zellyard, and there was Necromancer, that was my first game that I was addicted to for well over a thousand hours being accumulated in such short notice. And then came Zellyard, and then came Bubsy, and then a huge gap clear out to where this guy is, and... If you've seen my videos in Disgaea, you can tell I've been hooked on that game real heavy. 1900 hours on Disgaea 1 and 2 combined, and only 20 months. No other game has even come close to that. Not even Bubsy. But anyway, so 20 lap is... Well, 5 laps are special. Everything that's a multiple of 5 is considered special, or I loop my top favorite part of the song repeatedly. Now, of course, there's ten laps. Here's another five, because, well, and here's a twenty lap right there. Five laps basically repeat the part of the song four times. Why it isn't five, that I have no idea. I actually have no idea on the origin of that. And, of course, ten laps use ten. Twenty laps use twenty. But what about fifteen here? Well, that's also a 5. It's based on the highest multiple of 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1000, and so forth. That's basically the system I used. So, 75, for example, that would be a 5 lap. 360, for example, that would be a 20. Get the idea? 150 would be based on a 50. 400 would be based on a 200. But that's basically what 20 laps and stuff basically are. It's really, really, really long. And of course, this is actually true speed, too, by the way. Could you imagine half speed and how long that's going to be? Hmm. 